Hello, my name is Thomas Little, and I'm a SQL Server DBA. I've been working as a SQL Server DBA for over 15 years now. And today, we're going to do an introduction to in-memory OLTP. So in-memory OLTP is a memory-optimized data page that can integrate it into SQL Server. And it's designed to improve performance on data workloads and transaction processing, such as workloads with high data ingestion, contention read and writes and low latency requirements for applications. Um, it was available in 2014. Uh, it was greatly enhanced in 2016 and it is available in the community technology preview for vNext on both Windows and Linux and also Azure databases with a premium subscription uh, currently in preview. As I stated SQL Server in memory OLTP was introduced with SQL Server 2014 in Enterprise and Developer. In 2016, it became available in any edition with Service Pack 1 preferred. It requires 64-bit version of SQL Server, and there are processor requirements for the instructions being used. So one thing to keep in mind, some VM architectures don't support the certain processor instructions required and so you need to work with if you have a virtualized SQL Server environment you need to work with your virtualization architect to determine if you can use in-memory OLTP. You need to be sure that there is enough memory on your server to be able to support your memory optimized tables and its indexes and its data. As I stated before in-memory OLTP is part of the database engines and engine service feature in the setup. So when you're going through setup and you choose database engine services, you choose that feature, you automatically get in-memory OLTP engine installed depending on the product and edition you're installing. So what are memory optimized tables? Memory optimized tables store all of their data in the memory uh, so you don't have to go from disk to cache which kind of eliminates a lot of locking and latching and provides great performance. Um, some things you might need to know, uh, there are two options to durability. There's non-durable and there's durable, and we'll talk about that in the next slide. Uh, the default is durable, so schema and data. So durable versus non-durable. Uh, in the durable type, transactions are written to memory and also to the transaction log. So that if a server fails or is failed over, your data can be recovered. Um, in a non-durable type, transactions are still written to memory, however, they're not written to the transaction log. So data so the data needs to be stored somewhere else if you have an ETL process. That data can easily be um, transferred into another table. Those are decision points that you need to make um, when you're choosing the type of durability when creating your memory optimized table. Uh, how to query in memory optimized tables. Um, you can definitely do it through regular store procedures in inline T-SQL, but Microsoft definitely recommends using natively compiled store procedures. Uh, and these procedures execute without the need for compilation. You can uh, see an example here of what a natively compiled store procedure looks like. So what's new in SQL Server 2016? Uh, so in 2014, there were a number of limitations uh, with the product or the feature. Uh, in 2016, Microsoft invested some time in eliminating uh, some of those limitations. Uh, some ones that I'm really excited about are the uh, ability to alter a memory optimized table after it's created is now supported. TDE is definitely supported now and the max data type is definitely supported. So now let's do a small demonstration of creating a in-memory OLTP database 
uh, we'll create a memory optimized table and a disk based table and then we're going to go through testing the performance uh, between the two. Now I already have uh, SQL Server installed on my server uh, and Management Studio up in our example code that we're going to go through here. So our first step is to actually create the database and when we create the database we need to create a memory optimized file group for that. So I'm, us I'm using the T-SQL code because I just kind of want to show everyone what the create database statement looks like and how do you specify this file group. So you can see here that this particular clause, this contains memory optimized data, uh, specifies that it's a memory optimized data file group. Okay. So when we do our create statement and it executes, you're going to see that that executed successfully. Now what we'll also be able to do is see that in Management Studio so when you click on files and file group, see that. So in our file group section, you'll see that the memory optimized data or file group has been created and you'll see our file associated with that. Okay. So our next thing that we're going to do is create the actual table. So we're going to create two tables. One's a disk based table and one is a in memory table. And how we specify the memory table are two clauses, memory optimized on, and we also set the durability. So when you set memory optimized on, it knows by default to create that table in the file group uh, that we specified, the memory optimized data file group. Durability in our PowerPoint slide, we talked about the different types of durability. There's two, there's durable and non-durable. By default, schema and data uh, is used when you create a table if you don't specify it. Uh, I'm specifying it here just to show you, but if we wanted just the schema only durability, we would change this right here to just say schema only. For this example, we're going to choose schema and data. So let's go ahead and create our tables. And what, what, again, what it's doing is when it creates the tables, it knows the there is a memory optimized table, so it's going to create it in that file group. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to load some sample data. Uh, and this is going to load sample data into the disk based table and the in memory table. And there's one thing that I want to point out with this. You'll see here at the very top, I'm doing a truncate and delete. And the reason why I'm doing that is just to make sure that for our demonstration, there is absolutely no data in here. But I wanted to specify it because you'll notice I didn't truncate the table, the in-memory table. And that's because truncate isn't available. So you can't truncate a memory optimized table. You have to delete from it. Um, and that's one thing that if Microsoft's listening, I'm hoping they can, uh, I'm hoping they can do in the future, uh, maybe with vnext, not sure, but for demonstration purposes and just for information for my viewers, truncating a in-memory table is not allowed and so you have to delete from it. Okay, so our data has been loaded. Now let's start setting up our test and the test that I want to do is a performance test against a disk based table, a natively compiled stored procedure that queries a memory optimized table, and then a simple select statement that queries the optimized table. And we're going to see this the difference between the two. The first thing we need to do however is create our in memory, I'm sorry, create our natively compiled stored procedure. And so you see here that I have this stored procedure code already created and we're not going to go into what natively compiled stored procedures are. That's probably another uh, article or video. But what we're doing here and what's important to notice is that we are doing a select statement on the in-memory table against to find ID 
number 2500 okay and so let's go through and get this created and so this is going to create the natively compiled store procedure and we're going to do a simple select statement to that while we're doing that and it executed successfully so now let's get our profiler tree set up so that we can measure some of the performance so I already have profiler here and I already have a template uh, created uh, but we'll go over the template real quick just to make sure that if you're doing this along with me you have your template set up correctly so I have this template set up but let's look at the events there's two events there's store procedures and T-SQL and I have these particular columns that I'm choosing the text data CPU read writes and then our start and end times okay and so let's go ahead and start running this let's maximize this here so that we can see all the data change our fields here so that we can see some of this data okay and we'll start to run our profiler chase now now with our profiler trace running let us do a query so in our query here we have we're querying the disk space table the in memory table uh, using a natively compiled and stored procedure and just a direct t sql statement so we're going to go ahead and execute that okay so we went ahead and executed it so let's look at our profiler trace here so we can see on our disk base table we have uh, reads of three but look at our natively compiled store procedure it's pretty much zeros across the board compared to our T SQL statement against there looks like we took up 15 um, of the CPU time so definitely some performance benefits here with um, in memory uh, natively compiled store procedures querying a in memory or a memory optimized table so next what we'll do is let's do a larger set of data uh, for our example and see what the performance is for that so let's go back to our table here or our statement here and we're going to alter our store procedure to do a record set greater than 2500 so this will actually query 2500 records I'm, I apologize this will actually bring back a data result of 2500 records uh, so let's go through and alter our store procedure and while we alter our store procedure we're gonna rerun our test again and you'll see here that I modified our predicate uh, for anything greater than or equal to 2500 our compiled stored procedure natively compiled stored procedure will also do the same thing so let's go through and go through profiler and clear out our results there and go through and execute our new test Now let's go through Profiler and look at our results. So our disk space table, um, 16 for CPU and 40 for writes. Look at our natively compiled stored procedure with the same result set, zeros across the board. Our T-SQL statement directly against in memory table also took some time so you can see that there is some great benefits to natively compiled stored procedures when querying memory optimized tables so that is our that is the conclusion of, of our demonstration you can see or perform this same uh, example by visiting my website at www.thomaslittledba.com and that's little with d's so thomas l i d d l e d b a.com and i want to thank everyone for viewing 
uh, and uh, thanks again. <laughs>